right, so this morning we're going to do Kentucky Route Zero. And we're going to be doing... Um, there's three acts out right now. There's five acts planned, much like... Um, much like Life is Strange. So... Yeah. Interesting menu. Like, no options, no... Wicked, it is, if you missed uh, the park last night, it is up on YouTube, youtube.com slash the game case. Full playthroughs up there, as well as my playthrough from the week before of Layers of Fear. Moving truck rumbles softly to itself. Painted on its side are the words Lizette's Antiques, Furniture, Glassware, and Curiosities. An old hound in a straw hat. Both have seen better days. Okay. Joseph sits beneath gas pumps in the Queen Anne armchair. His hair is gray and his glasses darken. This is definitely a unique art style. Why is he sitting in a Queen Anne? Damn, did you hear that wreck? Truck full of bottles. I don't know, beer bottles, whiskey, lost a tire or something and spilled booze and glass all over the interstate. What a mess. I hope they don't come down here looking for anything. We blew a damn fuse and it's all shut off. I hear a dog, what's his name? Uh, his name is Homer, his name is Blue, or just some dog. Um, we're gonna call him, we're gonna call him Blue, he's a hound dog. Blue sounds like a sweet old hound. I used to know a dog like that. Hey, here's some jerky for Blue. I made it myself. Didn't turn out too well, but I bet a dog will eat it. Getting late, right? I can feel the sun on my neck, but it's just a few feet off the horizon. I've been driving all evening looking for five dogwood drive. I've got a delivery to make on dogwood. I'd rather watch the sunset. Well, no, let's maybe we actually do our job. Ah, let's do our job. Yeah, I understand you've got to do the job you're paid to do. Maybe get some rest somewhere in there. Maybe have a drink. Then come back at it. There's a valor in that rhythm. What's your rhythm like? Oh, I just like to listen to the TV. Used to do a lot of poetry on the computer, but I don't have the ear for it lately. Listen, you and Blue would have been driving up and down 65 all night. Dogwood is on the other side of, well, you... To get there, you've got to take the zero. Zero is a tough route to find. You can use my computer to look up directions. You'll have to head down into the basement and reset the circuit breaker first. I'll be happy to have those whining lights back up anyway. It's too damn quiet out here. Basement door is back there in the office. Appreciate your help. Friend, oh, and here, take this lamp. It gets dark. All right, so we have a lamp. This is this is a very unique a very unique art style. Emily, Ben, and Bob sit in folding chairs beneath a worn card table. 
Papers, oddly shaped dice in the highway maps. Cover the tabletop. Oh, sorry, didn't know there was anyone down here. Did you hear something? Oh no, sorry, I was looking at the rules again. It gets easier as you go, look. You said you rolled a five, right? That means you get to pick up your marker and move it anywhere on the map. So it's your turn now, right? Yeah, I guess so. Where'd you put that 20-sided die? I don't see it. Did you drop it? Uh, It should be easy enough to find. It glows in the dark. What? I think it rolled down to the left there, but I don't see it. I'm not going to go looking for it. It's too dark down there. Why don't you go down and get it, and I'll just study the rules here. Okay, so I don't see it. So their left would actually be over here. We can't get there. A dusty, rusty sign is bolted onto the wall. These are the rules. One, no open flames near the gasoline. No consumption of beer or spirits on the premises. In case of sudden darkness, do not panic. Relax. Count backwards from five. Strictly limit time spent in the basement to fewer than three minutes of every hour. Okay, creepy. Oh, we got the game piece. Number five is facing up. It's just a small piece of plastic, but has a reassuring, almost comforting weight. Places the object in his jacket pocket. Pulling chairs are arranged around a worn card table. The chairs are empty and the surface of the table is bare. I put the I put the die on the table. Interesting. All right, there's a circuit breaker. Weird. Also, I love this giant horse head gas station. Just listen to those lights whine, yep. Let's tell them that there was some people in the basement. No, I don't think so. Maybe that lamp light was playing tricks on you. Okay, so there's good morning, Zeph. How are you doing? Strange things happen underground, especially in the dark. Computers in the office, you're looking for Marquez. 
You know there's a way around this road. She'll get you to the zero. The password is, uh, damn. You usually just feel it out. Muscle memory, you know? It's kind of long, kind of like a short poem, I think. One of those short poems that really sums it all up. You'll figure it out. Let's use the computer. We tap the key, wake the computer from its reverie. User. Conway. Joseph. Uh, let's do Conway. User Conway is not real. slide loose the moon throbs it will only get later password accepted how's it going in there figuring it all out sure you are messages address book or games look at games games is not real Message one is from Donald at hotmk.mail. Message two is from accounts at consolidated.mail. Read message one from Donald. Probably should be going with his, uh, through his email subject. Fragments dim of lovely forms. Joseph, I know it's been a while and I know you're still sore, but there's a whole world in here and we need your help to unmask it. Yes, the caves are cold and damp, and we are old and lame. Never mind. I can't remember why I even started writing this. I miss those days in the lab with you and our dear Lula. Maybe you found your own Xanadu. Well, so have I. Good morning, Opiator. End of message. So let's uh, read the, from the accounts at Consolidated. Outstanding, urgent. Dear Equus Oils, there is an ur there. This is an urgent automated message that your account is overdue by more than 14 days. In response, we have switched you to our low reliability, dirty power plus plan. <laughs> Consider making a payment immediately to obviate the need for us to switch you to sustained brownout select. Sincerely, your friends at the Consolidated Power Company. All right, so let's exit messages. Let's look at the address book. Let's look at Dogwood Drive. Address Dogwood Drive is not real. Address the zero is not real. Okay, let's see. He told us to look for Marquez. I just want to do with all the options. Marquez residence, 100 Macondo Lane. Head northeast on 65 and turn left as soon as you see that ugly tree that's always on fire. Look for the barn at the base of the mountain there. You can't miss it. Got it! Out there on Macondo somewhere, right? Yeah, that's it. Hey, look. While you were down there, I loaded that old TV of mine into your truck. I borrowed that thing from Weaver Marquez a number of years ago, and now that the power is all weird over here, I can't pick up anything but static and public access anyway. She was always more of a reader, but maybe she'd want it back at home. It's a nice TV. Well, thank you for letting us run your errands. Appreciate that, old timer. Let's go back and talk to him. We, we haven't even made it off the first screen yet. 
Something's gone down. You and Blue better get on that road if you're going to make your delivery. Okay, so we can talk to Blue now? Conway scratches behind Blue's right ear. How's it going, Blue? It's odd. What do you think about this place? It's odd. I never noticed about it driving by. How about a treat? Here's some jerky from the gas station attendant. So it looks like the dog was our bosses. Alright, let's get back in the truck. It's time to go. What? This is this game? So we gotta go to Macondo? Whoa. What the? I don't know where I'm going. Oh, I wanted to. Where he shakes his head. Like a tough one to walk away from. Okay. Anybody remember the directions? <laughs> Smith's Grove Road, Glasgow, Vine Street, Otter Gap, Office of the Buffalo Creek Rural Electric Co Cooperative Corporation is almost invisible from the road. Parking lot overgrown with weeds and its facade sheltered by ivy. Conway looks in through a window. A sinewy shadow obstructs the view through the window. Let's drive away. Where's Macondo Road? Mount Olive Gherkin Road. What road is this? Mount Olive Road, Glasgow Road. Miss Grove Road. <laughs> Mary Oaks. Bon Air. Cumberland Parkway. Burning tree. Tall black oak burns on a hill above the road.
Kirk jerks towards the shoulder, nearly run off the road by a swarm of dragonflies. Their wings beat briefly in the headlights and disappear into the night. There's the Marquez farmhouse. Okay. Street lamp lights the base of a dusty path leading up a hill. Oh, I didn't want to talk to Blue. This game has a really unique art style. I, this, is, this is really interesting. A family graveyard is set off to the side of the house. Headstones are inscribed with the surnames of the unfortunate. Nowakowski, Padilla, and Marquez. Oh, and we got our TV. We just walk into our house and turns on. I was just thinking what a lovely house we have. Do you like it? Have you been here before? Did you happen to see an owl? Sure, it's a nice house. I know. I like the large beams that run across the ceilings. I like to sit in the house and think of the heel, hills and bluffs surrounding us like like a cradle there used to be another house here but we had it destroyed and we built this one it was very expensive and we got quite underwater what do you do for work is it too difficult or do you like it very much i was once a mathematician are you looking for something in particular here we drive deliveries for a small antique shop i believe it's hard times for a small antique shop it's hard times everywhere even out here in our little farm, my parents stopped paying the bank a while back. I shouldn't even be here, but I just stayed. I have some notebooks. I'm only a little bored. I might prefer to watch TV occasionally. Actually, I have a TV here that I think belongs to you. Will you please set it up? Then I can explain to you how to get where you're going. The zero. I know. How does she know? Let's set up the TV for it. It's not how it's supposed to look. You made a mistake setting it up. Is it a foreign object to you? Which of your parents was it who wouldn't allow you to watch television? Ma thought she heard ghosts in the static. Dad thought it was radioactive. Ma thought she heard ghosts. I know about that. She was ill, wasn't she? Mentally, I mean. Kind of distant, fearful. Fearful, yeah, that's a way to put it. You have it all backwards. I'm not surprised. Are you? Have you been paying attention? I don't think you have. It's time to start paying attention now, Conway. Look closely at the television. That's that's not the television. That's, that's a barn.
Hey, hey, wake up. You spaced out for a minute there. What do you keep out in that barn? Used to be tools and feed, then books. Now I think it's mostly spiders. The TV is picking up the wrong signal. My cousin Shannon would know more about it. She fixes TVs for a living. Well, she used to. I think the new models are giving her some trouble. Your cousin? That's my father's brother's daughter, Shannon. We're about the same age. Well, we used to be. She's older now. We're about the same age. Well, we used to be. She's older now. She has a workshop up north a ways by the lake, right where Piona and Wax Road meet. It's a big bait and tackle shop, and she fixes TVs in the back. Do you like fishing? Honestly, I'm not convinced you should bother with the Zero. I'd much rather you find my cousin and fix my TV, but I'll get you headed the right way. But it's pretty easy. Get back on 65 heading north. And take the first right after the artificial limb factory. From there, your arrival at the Zero is basically inevitable. The first right after the artificial limb factory. Nice to know you, Conway. Keep your eyes open, especially in the dark. What is the, what is this game? This is so weird. So it doesn't appear like we can go. An abandoned spider web stretches across the bottom of the saucepan. A skillet is seasoned with dust. The disused word burning stove is set up in one ash dusted corner of the room. It's cold to the touch. So it doesn't look like there was actually anyone here. What the what? Let's just, we'll just leave that door open. That's fine. That's fine. I'm sure the imaginary woman that doesn't actually live there will get to it, right? Go back to our truck. And the car is gone now too. Okay, so there was, there was her sister had a, damn it, I should have paid more attention to that, about where her sister's place was. It was where two roads come together. One of them was, was Paul Road? Brownsville. Galbite. Let's go this way. Dixie Highway.
Hammondsville. Frenchman Knob. Princeville. Wheeler Mill, Priceville, Grayson Springs. All right, so Wax Road. Here's the bait shop. It pulls into the bait shop parking lot. Bolted above the road on a thin steel bar, handwritten sign reads, Live Bait Minnows. Small and also large for stripers, night crawlers, chips, and beer. The green flyer hangs loosely from a bit of masking tape at eye level. The shop's right of dirt parking lot sprawls unevenly into grass and then eventually trees. The bait shop is open. Read the flyer. Computer printed in a bold font surrounds a clip art illustration of a TV set. The TV has eyes, arms, and legs. Its shoulders are slouched. On the screen is a cartoon expression of exhausted nausea. Hot water bottle rests against its wire antenna. TV repair, no model too old. Inquire within. We do not sell digital converter boxes. Conway enters the bait shop. Narrow aisles crowded with lures, reels, rods, and snacks. By the shop lengthwise from the entrance to the cashier's counter. The left wall is lined with churning tanks of water. Conway approaches the tanks. The three metal tanks aren't labeled, and the water is too agitated to get a clear view of what's inside each one. The contents of the first tank are vaguely gray. The second is a muddy pink. The third is clear but shiny silver flecks. Reach into the first tank. Brushes against something roughly the size of his pawn. Scaly, uneven service. He runs his finger along the bottom of a bead of sweat. Bridges the inches from the from his temple to the water's surface. Something bites at his forearm. He recoils. Fingers slip through something fleshy but inert. The sensation is nauseating. His elbow passes into the pinkish mass. He realizes he's about to be sick from the smell and pulls away. The water seems to tremble with life. Conway can't tell if his hand is being nibbled by fish or massaged by the artificial current. As his eyes near the surface of the water, he can see something colorful glowing faintly at the bottom of the tank. The tremor spreads from his elbow out to his fingertips and up to the base of his shoulder. His vision flickers. The water is running warm under his skin now. He has a sensation that his something is about to snap. His eyes close. He lays on a rooftop, new shingles rough beneath his back, swelling in the noon sun. He is exhausted. It must have started before dawn. His legs are sore from holding the stable on the uneven surface. His wrists from breaking old sealant. His fingers from carefully lifting shingles to hammer down new ones. His boss, Ira, yells from the idling truck below. He shades his eyes with his hand. A beer would be good. It's barely past noon, but he's worked a full day already. What could the harm be? Maybe a shot at the counter just to get his eyes open. Then a beer. He could offer to drive into town for lunch and stop at that place on Cumberland. Cashier pushes Conway rough on the shoulder. He's been talking, yelling maybe, but it's all an echo now. Conway looks up, his neck stiff with pain, his right palm still tingling. The cashier points to the tank, then above it to a few holes stored in the wall, nail holes from which an electric sign has come dislodged and fallen into the water. He helps Conway to his feet, looks at him pitifully, and returns to the cash register. Right, so let's approach the counter. A wiry cashier stands behind the register, preoccupied with the Sudoku. Handwritten sign between the... We ask about Shannon Marquez's workshop. A handwritten sign on the door. Behind the counter reads, TV repairs by appointment. Please consult with cashier. The cashier knocks a few times on the door and waits. Occasionally glancing at his puzzle. After a few moments with no answer, he notices a smaller note written on the sign. Reads it, then points it out to the to Conway. Weaver, I got your message. It left for the old mine. Don't know if I will see you there or what. Ready either way. Shannon. I asked about the basketball game. Cashier switches on the radio and AM Sports broadcast is playing, but Conway can't be sure if it's meant to answer or to drown out his questions. All right, so that looks like that's all we're going to get from them. 
So let's leave and let's let's go to where they um where they told us to go. Conway drives away. So it was up sixty five by the old It's gotta be this thing. Oh, hold on. Young man in gray stained clothes sits by the side of the road. He's playing a worn guitar. To his left is a blue mug, and to his right, a weathered dog. Conway stands and listens. The young man strums absently on the guitar, hums tunelessly, and occasionally mumbles a word. Conway pulls a wrinkled dollar bill from his back pocket and puts it in the young man's cup. The young man stops playing, pulls the wet dollar bill out of his whiskey, and hands it back to Conley. <laughs> he just had whiskey in there. That's kind of funny. Hold on. I wanted I asked to look at that. The edge of the building is parking a lot of large sign, partly obscured by trees, reads a mare to official limb factory. Okay, so that's all we can see there. Going blue. Hey, you got something on your hat? Did you pick that up on the road? You like it out here, don't you? Picking up strange dirt on the road. Okay, there's somebody here. Shannon speaks into the large brick cell phone held up to her ear. Okay, so now we're Shannon. $200 for two weeks. But can I trust them to not just change the locks? Okay, you're right. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Love you. What? He's a stranger. Excuse me, ma'am. I saw the light was on. Looking for the on-ramp to... You believe in ghosts? Well, let's see. I do believe a place can be haunted, if that's what you mean. What about a person? Can a person be haunted? Sure, I guess a person could. Sometimes I feel haunted myself. What haunts you? Uh, bad decisions, I guess. Wasted use. Ha. Ah. Well, look. Here's what it is. I drive deliveries for a shop called Lizette's Antiques, and I'm out trying to finish this job. Making a delivery to the mine? Oh, uh, no. I have a delivery for five with Dogwood Drive, and I can't remember ever seeing that address before. Now I heard I need to take a highway called the Zero. So I met this young lady named Weaver Marquez, and she sent me this way, and so here I am. Uncommon kind of place for an on-ramp, but that's what it's been like so far anyway with... What? Weaver Marquez, do you know her? So you saw her tonight. I know Weaver. She was, she's my cousin. I'm Shannon Marquez. Oh, you're the one who fixes televisions. That's right. Did she tell you that too? Of course she did. Weaver doesn't lie. One time when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was crushed metal everywhere and we'd be hearing it echo throughout the house for years, she said. I was very upset, crying, 
Then my dad walked in the door, just come back from a trip to the junkyard, collecting scrap metal to fashion into wind chimes. I was angry, but she said it wasn't a joke, and it wasn't a lie. At the time, I thought she meant it as a riddle or a puzzle. But Weaver's not a puzzle. She's a mystery. So what are you doing down here, Shannon? Talked to Weaver earlier this evening, too. Or anyway, she talked to me. It's hard to tell if she's listening sometimes. Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old Elkhorn mine. She said I'd find something I've been looking for. What are you looking for? Not exactly sure. I have a few ideas. I'll know it when I see it. Not such a bad thing, you showing up now. All told, I'd rather not go down there alone. Your dog should stay up here, though. It's no place for a dog. It's an old mine. It runs pretty deep and tangled. If we're going to go down into it, find your on-ramp and whatever else, we've got to keep our bearings. I don't want to get turned around. we got some gear here to measure conductivity, frequency response, stuff like that. Maybe we can find a way to put a signal out ahead. Do some analysis and figure out what kind of topology we're up against. Sure, let's look around. Okay, so we can't talk to Blue. Let's just go. Maybe he won't follow us. Blue's following us. I love the little, like, throws a horseshoe thing. PA system. That runs into the mine's PA system. Do you think it still works? Only one way to find out. All right, give it a whirl. Is anybody down there? Nothing, hmm? Oh, there's no power. Yeah, okay. Even when this old mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. You know, the miners used to have to pay just to run the fans and the lights. Yeah, they got paid in these shitty plastic tokens. Coal script, you know? you want to run the fans for a bit to clear the air up, well, you have to put a token in. My parents used to work here, so did Weaver's parents. I guess a lot of folks' parents worked here. Can we power it up? I bet we just have to free up some power for the PA system. Everything is rationed here. Set up that lamp of yours, and I'll go unplug these ceiling lights. Trying to think of something clever to say. Heard the speakers back here crackle a bit. It's on now, right? Say something into the microphone. Well? Okay, I hear you. We need to measure the echo delay time and figure out how deep the tunnels run. Make some noises into the mouthpiece. Damn, that's a long delay. These tunnels run deep. I bet some of them have ruptured or joined up with the cave system. All right, I set up my spectrum analyzers to just say something into the mouthpiece. We can get a sense for how narrow the mine tunnels are. Don't be shy. Just say anything that comes into your head. Tell me a story about something. Or what did you have for breakfast today? Made biscuits. Talked about her late husband, Ira. And we just sat there for a bit. Got it. Looks like the tunnels are pretty cramped. Yeah, low ceilings. Hope you're ready to stoop a bit. Yeah, you're probably used to it. One more. Good morning, Joe. One more test. We just need to know if the air is breathable or if it's too thin or too dense. Just sit real close to the mouthpiece and breathe. I'll measure the resonance of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Just try to relax. Try to breathe naturally. Breathes and thinks about the road. Breathes. 
breathes and remembers a moment earlier in the day. Getting some pretty strong readings here. I think we're in good shape, but keep at it for a minute. Breathes and visualizes a cold drink. Conway breathes as a peel of feedback and loose rock engulfs him. Jesus, are you all right? What the hell? I'm okay. I'm okay. I've got you. You're all right. Shit. Your leg is pinned. I'm going to pull you out. We have to get you out of here. There you go. Okay. Are you hurt? Can you put any weight on that leg? It's all messed up. It's fine. Just try to stand up. Careful. I'm right here. It's going well, man. Enjoying this, uh, enjoying this game. This is really kind of unique. Damn, don't worry, I've got you. That leg is in bad shape. Here, let's get you onto the tram. There you go. Now, let's see if this thing has power. Well, okay, there's some luck, right? Should be able to ride this tram right out of one of the auxiliary exits, if there are any. I think there are. What about the on-ramp? We'll just find the exit and then figure out what to do from there. That's our first priority. Well, the controls are over on your side. Let's get moving. see the canary cage that's awesome for those that don't know miners used to use canaries as an indicator of the air quality within a mine canaries are much more uh, I guess susceptible to changes in, or maybe they're just tiny I don't know what it was but if the canary died you knew you had to get out Oh, here we are. This may be hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe myself. This whole branch was underwater last I heard. Is it safe? I guess so. Looks like they finally drained it. Or maybe it just drained off on its own. The water came in pretty fast and a lot of folks got trapped in the tunnels. Only heard parts of how it went from there. Sanitized for the bereaved. You know how these big companies are. But there was gossip too. The trapped miners couldn't get the pumps going because the power was rationed. They shut all the lights off, but even then it wasn't enough. So I guess it was dark when they... You lost some people down here, didn't you? We all lost people down here. Well, not all of us, but most of us. Doesn't matter now. Look, this old turntable is still wired up. The controls are dead, but I can use my signal generator to switch tracks. If the water hasn't damaged it too much, or we can just keep heading down this tunnel. All this junk hanging up around the turntable is from the company store. Just junk, you know. Miners would buy it and use it to decorate the place. Or as landmarks, I guess. Hard to know which way is which down here. It's also dim and gray. We're on the track between the animal bones and the rowboat. So... Tuning the pendulum and the casket. I guess that was the wrong one. Oh, we're gonna go. Oh, okay. So we're gonna go towards the pendulum and the casket.
is so weird. Good tape player. Dusty reel to reel tape player is stashed beneath the track, loaded with tape that's starved for power. Alright, we're not going any farther that way. Okay, that's creepy. I didn't know those were still down there. Yo, yeah, what was that? Look, there's a tape player down here. One of those old reel-to-reel -reel setups. When this mine was active, a couple of folks, music, folk music archivists, spent time down here recording minor songs, really academic ivory tower types. None of the miners really talked to them much. So they stayed at the margins, observed, took notes, and then sometimes they'd get someone on a lunch break to sing into their microphone. And I guess the power company got some kind of interest in the project and gave the archivist some coal script tokens to pay the miners with for their songs what happened to the archivist they got out when the flood came they left yes that would be uh joe brums aka the the artist formerly known as the kerosene kid How are you liking Life is Strange, Joe? Alright, so we're gonna get back to the turntable and try a different direction. On the track between the pendulum and the casket, so... Let's try the bat feeder and the scarecrow. This game is definitely unique, Smooth. Definitely some interesting sounds coming from it. Broken track. Tracks are all messed up here. This tram isn't going any further. I wonder what's down that tunnel. All right. So I guess we should have just stayed on the, the track that we were on the first time. It's a lot of speakers mounted there. Animal bones in the rowboat. Chapter two is definitely a good one. This one appears to be angling up, so that's good. 
Up is good, right? Up is out. I hope. Nothing here. So we turn the light off because there's not a lot of power. And uh, right now we're powering the tram. So there's occasionally things that we can turn on like that. Like that sound recorder. Thank God, okay. Alright, let's go. We poked around everywhere. Yeah, okay, I just... That tunnel where the tracks were broken. I'd like to take a look down there. Do whatever you need. I'll just wait for you here. Thanks. I'll be right back. Does she have a flashlight? As she wanders off into the abandoned mines? Look at the birdcage now. Paper tag hangs from the birdcage by a strange canary. 25 tokens. Holy crap. They made them pay for their canaries. Canaries sold at the company store. Did they also sell respirators? No bones in the cage. Birds must have been set free. Or maybe the cage was cleaned. There are cardinals at the Louisville Zoo and other birds. Ostriches, eagles, emus. No canaries. Too common? Too small? Maybe, but they have starlings. Starlings aren't much bigger than canaries. Pile of tape reels is jammed into the top of the tram. They must have been thrown on in a rush. The reels are unlabeled. The tape has decayed. Lizette Nyra's son, Charlie, talked about a piece of music he liked with, made with old decaying tapes. What was it called? Something about... Charlie had the most bizarre taste in music. Weird, noisy computer music. Where did he even hear that stuff? Louisville, probably. Or in college. He was a smart kid. Damn pity. Notebooks. A notebook at the top of this dusty stack is labeled in black marker. The label is dusty and smudged, but it looks like it might say horses. Houses, maybe? Or verses, even? Crude and hurried handwriting. Lizette has immaculate handwriting. Christine and measured cursive, never a stray mark. For the last several months, she filled out the receipts for each order. Since a young couple complained about the handwriting on the order slip, it's carbon paper anyway. It's bound to wear away over time. If they're so precise about the records, they should put it on the computer anyway. So we're supposed to wait for the lady, but is she coming back? Huh. Hey, Bear. Good morning. I mean, there's nothing more to do here. All right, let's leave. Screw Shannon. Yeah, this is uh this is glass number two for me. Oh yeah, we're hurt. We got pinned in a mine cave in. Forgot about that. Oh, cool. Now we're wandering into a shack. 
Gramps shack is lined with wooden shelves. Dusty stacks of tape reels and notebooks crowd the room, but a bit of moonlight filters through a window near the ceiling. On a small desk in the middle of the room lay three notebooks. The red one is labeled J. Marquez, the green one is labeled R. Marquez, and the blue one is unlabeled. So let's open the red one. Pages are covered in disorganized notes, some written horizontally and others scribbled vertically. A few pages are lined more evenly. Lyrics, harmonies, and coal halls. On each page is a delicately rendered charcoal drawing. Most are portraits of rugged faces near the middle of the book. There are a few drawings of a young girl in a miner's helmet. She plays along the minecart tracks, collecting pieces of wire. One drawing, another young girl sits nearby, intently studying a book. Notebook is full of Greek letters and cryptic mathematical formulas near the back of the book. What first looks like it might be. Oh, yeah, this place. These notebooks are labeled Marquez. Your parents are the archivists? No, Weaver's parents are the archivists. My parents were miners. I thought they were sisters. Or they were, I guess they were cousins, weren't they? I can walk on it, but it's painful. Oh, I've got some painkillers here that could help you. I got them from a friend. When I sprained my wrist installing a security system, you better let me drive, though. They're pretty strong. Yeah, maybe that's best. Don't worry, I've been driving since I was nine. Still need to find the zero. Looks like I told you Weaver doesn't lie. If she sent you here to find your on-ramp, this is where you should be looking. Maybe you just weren't listening closely enough, and that's not exactly what she said. Saw Weaver at my workshop that's up north, up north by Lake Nolan. Right by Wax and Peonia in the back of a bait shop. Pretty glamorous, right? These are the times we live in. Either up there or back at the farmhouse. Whichever you, you want to head first, just let me know. We'll let her drive. Because we're all effed up on painkillers. Third hand um, painkillers. Was that antiques? I guess this is your truck. Surprise. It's kind of old. No, I'm not surprised. I guess it's an antique too. I think it suits you. Conway stands solemnly in front of Blue. Blue, this is Shannon. Nice to meet you, Blue. Got some dried banana slices in my bag. Take care of your friend here, and there's more where that came from. All right, so let's go ahead and... Conway heads back into the night. All right, so we need to go. We want to go to the farm. Let's go. Let's try the farmhouse first. Where was the farmhouse? Here it is. Sweet. Tall black oak burns on a hill above the road. Act one, scene five. The Marquez Farmhouse. <laughs> so now we're hurt and limping. It's so cool how it like kind of comes into focus as you get closer. Such a neat game graphically. Oh, she's helping us now. Wow. Yeah, we're in a bad way.
There's nobody buried here, you know. It's decorative, I guess. Or it's art or something, I don't know. Nowakowski, Padilla, I don't know those names. Maybe the people who lived here before. I know when they bought this property, it already had a house and everything. Or maybe they have some other symbolic meaning. Oh, and look at that headstone, Marquez. I used to think that was for my parents. Now I don't know. Weird. Yeah, we definitely hear an owl. I don't think there's anything over here. There's not. Go into the house. This is definitely a very unique and interesting art style. Shannon, so this is where she was. Yeah, it makes sense. This is where Weaver and her parents lived. We took out a bunch of loans, you know, and had this place built. Do you have any debts? I owe some people some apologies. Well, you're lucky that's all you owe. My parents were like that until the company store found a way to get them. For my dad, it was tokens to run the fans and air purifiers. And for my mom, it was canaries. Two solutions to the same problem. But they sure sounded different. Weaver had debt too, a lot of it. All tuition. She said she was a mathematician. Yeah, she studied some esoteric stuff about about something about using math to translate between Spanish and English. Interesting. I think Weaver put those math skills to work on all the red numbers in the family checkbook and got a clear sense of just how hopeless their situation was. So she left. I guess she just drove away in the middle of the night. They woke up in the morning and the car was gone. Never came back until tonight. Um, someone else told me to come here and talk to her. Huh, okay. Guess we two aren't the only ones she's been talking to. That's not something you see every day. That old TV right there. Well, that is a damned antique for you. I had a model like that in the shop once, but I had to sell it off to make rent. Most painful decision I ever made. Say, do you mind if I open it up? Looks like the dials are all corroded and the screen is leaking light a bit. Come on. I bet Lizette would never forgive you for letting a specimen like that fall into disrepair. All right. So let's, let's talk about the TV. Oh yeah, these tubes are all messed up. Look like they've been in a swamp or a cave or something. There's moss growing on this one. That's okay. I have a few spares in my bag here. She just had spares for like an eight. Okay. Here, I pulled this one out of an old computer monitor. It just needs to be recalibrated a bit. Okay, that oughta should be something now. Are you seeing anything? Hey, that looks dangerous. What are you doing there? Damn. Okay. Here, I think the contacts are dirty. So don't go telling my customers I clean all old vacuum tubes with spit. <laughs> there, just got to turn it north-south and... to Kentucky Route Zero.
that's the end of Act One. Wow, I, I have to say, to be able to tell a story, to be brave enough to tell a story in in this fashion is is incredible. <laughs> 